Man is not saved by bread. Man is saved by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I made a little change in that. Because I wanted you to be sure of the connection. If you believe in your heart that Christ died and rose again, you're saved. And if you preach that word, you're saved. That's what it says in the epistle. And Paul was rarely wrong. And I disagree with him sometimes. <laughs> you know, he was a man, just like everybody else. He was a human being, like every man and woman in this room. And Paul did the best he could in the midst of creating and illuminating a belief system that's important to us all. Now, we're faced by some terrible things in this world. You know, one of the roles, or the main role of the deacon, is to connect with the community. And I take that really serious. And so I, I spend a lot of time looking at those issues that affect the community of people that I'm a part of, that, and also that I would like to be a part of. And there's a, a tremendous amount of fear in the world right now. You know, just when we think things are getting better, This crazy guy Putin decides to invade the Ukraine. Just when things were starting to calm down a little bit, and by the way, uh, I wanted to let folks know, if you, when you're leaving today, if you want to congregate, congregate out on the porch, because we kind of eliminate social distancing when everybody hangs out <laughs> at, the, at the front of the church so if you can remember to to do that, and also there's some uh, K95 masks back there that I got, especially for us, so if you'd like to take one, use it, go ahead. We're all watching what's happening in the Ukraine. My wife said something really powerful to me. That's the kind of woman she is. He said, would you be as bothered if it was a country in Africa that Putin invaded? I had to respond honestly. Probably not. What is wrong with us? You know, we are loved by God. We are loved by our Father. We are loved by Jesus Christ. And so we have the benefits of that love. And yet, something that is wrong in the Ukraine is not also wrong in the continent of Africa. You know, if, if Putin had invaded Mexico, the only reason that that would get our attention is because of protecting the United States of America. But if he invaded South America, would we be as likely to respond the way we have? I'm tossing that out there because as human beings, we have a conscience and we need to pay attention to it. Now, not everybody has a conscience. I'm sad to say. I've known people who have no conscience, who feel no remorse when they do things. And uh, 
that's a very sad thing, but we're not like that. We have feelings we can trust about these things. And yet, you know, even comparing this issue to how we feel about other parts of the world somehow pales when you see a little kid who's been killed by one of those bombs. When you see older folks like me trying to get across the bridge that has been blown up to keep the Russians out of the city center. I saw those images on CNN. And I gotta say that it's hard for me to watch these things all the time, but I also believe that as human beings, we have to be witnesses of these things. We can't hide from them. And we could have hid from the Ukraine issue until Putin started talking about nuclear weapons. That got our attention, didn't it? It's a scary time. It's a scary time. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It's, it's, a, it's a consideration that we can't ignore, but we can't stop living either. There are things that need to be done. There are people that need to be saved. And I'm talking about in a classic religious Protestant Baptist upbringing of mine. There are people that need to come to God. Some of them don't know it yet. That's our job. Our job is not in here. I've said this over and over again. Our job is out there. You know, we, we're not saved by a brick and mortar building. We're saved by the love of Christ. And so we continue with our labors. I think back on Christ being in the wilderness, 40 days. Fasting for 40, 40 days is a long time to go without eating. It's a long time. I fasted. And at the end of four days of fasting, no food at all, you begin to feel it. <clears throat> you begin to notice your body's not doing what you thought it ought to. And it's not getting any nourishment. So thinking about Christ being able to endure 40 days. What a trial. You know, he'd recently been baptized. There was a transfiguration, God acknowledging his son, Jesus Christ. And then he goes out into the wilderness. If we've never been in a wilderness before, we are right now, folks. We're in the wilderness, and we're wondering what's going to happen next. And we're trusting a 70-year-old guy in a big white house in Washington, D.C. to make the right decisions. I am not convinced that most of the decisions that have been made in that big white house over the years are not the best decisions to have been made, but who am I? Who am I? I'm just a human being, right? A child of God as are you, and if we can find ways to help, we need to find ways to help. And I don't know what that, what that means right now. It's such an impossible thing to deal with. It would be like somebody standing across the, the, the river and lobbing rockets into Knoxville. Can you imagine what that would be like? It's a frightening thing, and that's not likely to happen. I think we're all praying that some sanity will come into the world. But in the meantime, we need to go on living.
That's what I feel in this church, is love for anybody who comes through those doors. There, there are good things happening to us and around us, and sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the negative. It's a beautiful day out there. I'm not forgetting that, guarantee you. It's a beautiful day out there. I hear a dog barking in the distance, actually. That's kind of, kind of nice, you know? So there's hope for us. God gives us hope. And when things seem to be going downhill, he improves the world enough that we can be grateful. Grateful for his deep and abiding love And where then is our faith? In times like these, with illness and war, where is our faith? Do we believe as we always have? Do we believe with our heart? Or do we lay in bed in the middle of the night asking questions if there aren't any answers? If things don't shake us up right now in this world that we're living in, shake us up to do important and better things, if this doesn't do it, I don't know what will. So we ask for peace. We pray for peace. We pray for knowledge. We pray for a path. We pray for a way to understand what's going on. And we don't give up. We don't quit. We don't quit. We just keep trudging along, doing the best that we can. Sometimes it's adequate, sometimes it's not, but we don't quit. You don't quit. We don't quit loving you. Purest love is a mother's love for their child, I believe, that we experience as human beings. My mother's love for me was unconditional. And that's the message, really. Our love should be unconditional. It shouldn't matter whether something's happening in the Ukraine or happening in Africa or happening in South America. Our job is to continue to love. No matter what hits us in the face, and some of these things do. Now you know we're we're through the worst of the virus, it seems. We're still taking precautions here because we have people in our congregation that have suppressed immune systems, and we need to be very careful with them. And we need to get to know them, know everybody else, to glean knowledge from each other. And that comes in the form of feeling dialogue, sitting down and really getting to know one another, allowing each other to talk and say the things that are on their mind. And as we move along with Lent now, it's a good time to examine these things and examine other things. One of the things that I'm trying to figure out right now is what we're going to be doing for a Lenten program. And I've got suggestions that are that are great. One suggestion is that we start reading the Psalms. I love the Psalms. I love them more now today than I ever did before. I like that idea. Another idea was to continue on Wednesday evenings what we were doing on Sunday evenings by going through the readings. We've also had a suggestion to change the day from Wednesday to a Tuesday or a Thursday, another day during the week. So that we can get everybody to that. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. I'm going to be sending emails out. I'm looking for opinions. And if I don't get opinions, then I'll just decide. That's what it is. And, um, and we'll move forward with it. When you walk out that door today, and you say goodbye to everybody here, be thinking about them babies in the Ukraine. 
And it's going to break your heart. But we've got to be witnesses. I believe that with my soul. That we can't defer looking at the reality of things and feeling the reality of things. I'm glad to be here today to be a part of this congregation, to be a part of what you all are, and to learn from you. God bless you and keep you. Make his countenance to shine upon you and give you strength.